Hey there, Joe Henry, a.k.a. the semi-retired guy. You know, it wasn't just five years ago that I was utterly homeless. My wife had left me and I was working as a shine boy at the airport. One day, a benevolent stranger came up to me and told me a secret. A secret to investing in stocks. A secret that would change my life forever. Overnight, I became a multimillionaire. Now, I fly my G700 around the world. I live in the beach in Bali with my new trophy wife. And I spend over $10,000 a month on holy water, just like Madonna. And for only a little over a dollar a day, you too can learn the secret, which will change your life forever. Yeah, no, this isn't going to be one of those videos. Actually, I've been investing in the stock market for well over 35 years. And I'd just like to share with you a simple method that you can use to do as well as the market, if not better, with less risk. Sound too good to be true? But wait, there's more. You won't even have to spend any money to learn this method. All you'll have to do is watch this video. And now a word for my attorney, Rocco. The information contained in this video is not intended as and shall not be understood or construed as financial advice. The semi-retired guy is not an attorney, accountant, or financial advisor, nor is he holding himself out to be. And the information contained in this video is not a substitute for financial advice from a professional who is aware of the facts and circumstances of your individual situation. The semi-retired guy has done his best to ensure that the information provided in this video are accurate and provide valuable information. Regardless of anything to the contrary, nothing available in this video should be understood as a recommendation that you should not consult with a financial professional to address your particular situation. The semi-retired guy expressly recommends that you seek advice from a, from a professional. Neither the semi-retired guy nor any of its employees or owners shall be held liable or responsible for any errors or omissions in this video or for any damage you may suffer as a result of failing to seek competent financial advice from a professional who is familiar with your situation. Well, didn't that guy just sound like the life of the party? All right, so let's get to the meat of this video today. Dividend stocks, how we're going to double your money in seven years or less. As a review, this is the kind of return you can expect from the various asset classes. Stocks, since 1926, the S&P 500 has returned 9.8%. And that's how you double your money every 7.3 years. And that's the end of our show today. No, just kidding. Bonds, 5.5% average. Now, not right now. Stock mutual funds, the big question in here is, why would you ever invest in a stock mutual fund? 75% do worse than the S&P 500. Okay, exchange-traded funds like SPY, which is the S&P 500 exchange-traded fund. Here you're buying the market, so if you buy this, you're doing as well as the market. Certificates of deposits. These depend on the current Fed funds rate. Gold. This price is all over the place. Options. Hard to make money here because of the high commission. Same with futures. Plus, it's much more difficult to hang on because of the high leverage involved. I bring up asset allocation just because this is something we're not going to be talking about today. However, this is an extremely important subject, which many believe is the, has the greatest impact on your portfolio's performance. This has to do with portfolio composition. What percentage of, it, of your portfolio will be in stocks? What percent will be in bonds? What percent will be in cash or CDs? This needs to be individualized because it's based on each investor's financial goals. What's their tolerance for risk? What's their retirement horizon? So the remainder of this presentation will be fo focused primarily on that portion of your portfolio, which is composed of stocks. So as you can see from this chart, you wouldn't be too badly just throwing your money in the S&P 500 and letting it ride. We know that over the last 90 years, the index has appreciated 9.8% per year, or in other words, doubled every 7.3 years. For those of you who aren't equated with 
index funds or exchange traded funds. A simple way to put your money into the S&P 500 would be for you just to buy shares in SPY, which is an exchange traded fund composed of the S&P 500 companies. For some of you, this might be the best way for you to invest your money since it's easy. You'll always do as well as the market and it has very low expenses. And maybe you've heard that Warren Buffett told his wife that upon his death, he wants her to put 90% of his money into the S&P 500 and the other 10% in cash. Now there's just one little problem. If you do put all your money in the market at once, you can expect a fair amount of volatility in the form of pullbacks, corrections, bear markets, and the dreaded mega meltdown. And here are the definitions of all those little dips we see in the market from time to time. Today we had a coronavirus dip, although not a big dip, 4%. So you've got to ask yourself, can you take all the heat of all those market declines? Will you panic and sell at the market low, potentially losing half your money, or, or will you hang on? So along came the dividend aristocrats. Now, they're not a panacea, but as you can see from this chart, the dividend aristocrats beat the S&P 500 pretty handily and with much less volatility. The aristocrats are... are are represented by the orange line and the S&P 500 is the blue line. So what are these dividend aristocrats? Well, these are companies which have grown their dividends for over 25 years and are listed in the S&P 500. So just being classified as a dividend aristocrat says a lot about a company's financial health. As shown here, these are the household name stocks like Johnson Johnson, ExxonMobil, AT&T, now, the aristocrats are part of a larger group called the Dividend Champions, which are companies like the aristocrats, which have increased their dividends over 25 years, but aren't necessarily included in the, in the S&P 500 index. They can be in any index. Now, the dividend contenders are no slouches either. They've grown their dividends for the past 10 to 24 years. And these are also pretty much household names too, like Best Buy, Comcast, Costco. And then finally, we have the challengers, and these are companies that have grown their dividends consecutively for only five to nine years. And these aren't exactly mom and pop stores either. In fact, the largest company in the world by market cap right now is Apple, and it's included in the challenger group. So is Citigroup and Delta Airlines. So you wouldn't go wrong buying champions or aristocrats, probably contenders. Now, challengers, on the other hand, you better do your homework. Hate to bring up Warren Buffett again, but he did buy a big chunk of Apple last year, so it must have looked pretty good to him. Well, some financial genius realized a while back that these dividend aristocrats have a pretty good track record, so they put together an exchange-traded fund called NOBL, which tracks the daily value of the dividend aristocrats. So as of last count, there's 57 companies included in this exchange-traded fund, and there's an average of 41 years of consecutive dividend growth. Now, with $6.5 billion in assets, that's pretty good liquidity. So you're not going to have to worry about the bid-ask spread when you're buying this instrument. The expense ratio is very low also. So you can see that for every dollar you put into it, it's only going to cost you a little more than a third of a penny to have it invested over these 57 stocks. Now here's the beauty of it all. The dividend aristocrats capture most of the market's gain while suffering less of the market's loss. In fact, the aristocrats capture 92% of the gains, which is pretty good uh, with only 75% of the losses. This might make it a little bit easier for you to hang on when the going gets rough. Now this slide shows the performance of NOBL versus the S&P 500 since inception of the fund in 2013. So it's only been there for seven years. Now this slide's got a lot of information, but the main point is that over the last seven years, it's returned 12.41% after expenses versus the S&P 500, which has returned 12.59%. And that's actually capturing about 99% of the market gains. So you might be saying at this point, well, geez, semi-retired guy, why wouldn't I just put my money in the S&P 500 instead of NOBL? Well, you would be right over this relatively short period of time, but as we talked about earlier, you would do better with the S&P 500, better than the S&P 500 and with less volatility by investing in the dividend aristocrats over the long period. This is the part where I say, but wait, 
there's more. Can we do better than the dividend aristocrats? Well, for those of you who like to tinker, I think we can do a little better. As I said before, NOBL contains all 57 dividend aristocrats, including those which are considered overvalued at any point and those which are considered to be undervalued. So what do you think would happen if we only purchased those companies which were considered undervalued? Now, another Warren Buffettism is that he buys great companies at a discount and then keeps them forever. This would seem to be in keeping with Warren Buffett. Now, what if we also make sure that these undervalued companies are not just what they would call value traps, which are companies which are cheap because they're on their way out? Some people might say that the energy sector contains a lot of these companies right now. Well, in my next presentation, I'm going to show you how I can decide which of these companies are undervalued and which are overvalued. I'll also show you which I'll also show you an easy way to screen out these value traps. So stay tuned for part two. Finally, if you like this video, please click on the like button. If you didn't like it, please leave a comment. Consider subscribing to my new YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button. Finally, if you're really bored out of your mind with nothing to do but get your teeth cleaned or a colonoscopy, check out my website, thesemiretiredguy.com. This is where I document my adventures in semi-retirement.